excuse me, giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Baal Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baal Shem, Rakak, Wadash, Shalom to the Lord's elect. Once again, it's another video. Hopefully this video is edifying to you brothers and sisters out there of the household of faith. Yeah, so I'm still inspired to do more videos getting at that silly little Negro, Anton LaVey, I mean Anton Daniels, <laughs> and all kind of brothers, mad brothers in GMS is lighting that guy up like, oh, it happens to be the 4th of July, so he's getting lit up like the 4th of July, should have kept his mouth shut, now that he opened his mouth, it's going to be all kind of brothers getting at him. He's, he, by the way, this Anton Silly Little Negro Daniels is the t-shirt of the week. He's the flavor of the week, all right? Because I don't think he's going to, uh, I don't think he's going to last that long, okay? Anyway, um, you see the title of this video here. If being poor was good enough for Yahweh Shai, then being poor is good enough for me. If being poor was good enough for Yahweh Shai, should have put four. Let me put four there and read it again. If being poor was good enough for Yahweh Shai, then being poor is good enough for me. Now, what inspired me to give it that title was a song by uh, this guy here. It was playing in my head earlier today, Clarence Reed. If it was good enough for my daddy, <laughs> it's good enough for me. Now, the song is wicked. I, I, uh, uh, word of caution, the song is wicked, the lyrics are kind of wicked, you know, it's, uh, he's talking about dealing with his father's woman, which is, which is uh, wickedness, according to the scriptures, but the, the groove of the song, the melody of it is pretty tight, it's one of those funky songs, back in the day, 70s funk, alright, so that's what inspired me, if you wanted to know where the inspiration came from for the title, well, that's where it came from, from, from that title, alright. If being poor was good enough for Yahweh Shai, then being poor is good enough for me. Because indeed, Yahweh Shai was poor. Even though he was rich, he became poor for the ministry's sake. And a lot of us brothers have developed that mindset. You know, brothers that was making good in, you know, money in the, in, in the world, when they came into the truth, they learned how to have food and remnant, as it is written, Having food and remnant, let us therewith be content. They learn how to be content with just the basic necessities. Okay? And let's get the first scripture. Okay, let's get the first scripture. Uh, bear with me for a minute. Uh, he became poor. Because a lot of these wacky tacky Christians, including Anton LaVey, Daniels, <laughs> the silly little Negro, they don't know that about Yahweh Shai, which they ignorantly call Jesus Christ. They don't even know his true name. They don't know that he became poor, all right, for the ministry's sake. And here's the scripture which proves it. They don't know. 2 Corinthians, the 8th chapter, the 9th verse, it says, for ye, for ye know that for ye know the grace of our Lord Yahweh Shai, that though he was rich, huh? Though he was rich, he was a carpenter. Even today, carpenters make good money. All right. So back in the day, he, he was a carpenter. He worked with his father. His father was a carpenter, Joseph. He was in the family trade. Yahweh Shai was. All right. But he became poor for the ministry's sake. Okay. That's one of the prerequisites of being in this ministry. That's one of the rite of passage, to be poor. And when, when we say poor, it doesn't mean eating out of a garbage can, all right? Poor meaning you have just enough to get by. You have your daily bread. As the scripture so brilliantly put it, having food and remnant, that's what the Apostle Paul told Timothy, having food and remnant, let us therewith be content. Remnant as in clothes, okay? Just enough clothes to have on our back, you know, for, for the four seasons, right? Especially in the winter. And food, because you need food to, to sustain yourself, okay? So the bare necessities, the basic necessities, okay? 2 Corinthians, the 8th chapter, the ninth verse. 
You know, it's not time for us now to live lavishly. We're going to do that in the kingdom. All right. Right now, we're in. The, we're we're serving a punishment. We're serving a captivity. Okay. Because we have sinned against Yahweh Barshim Yahshai, we have sinned against the Lord, so we are in punishment time, okay? But like it says in Lamentations, our punishment is almost up, all right? Matter of fact, let's hold that scripture, let's go to Lamentations right quick. You know, the, the prophet Micah said, I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him. You see, we're going to party in the kingdom. That will be the time to... To, to, to style and profile, you know? Well, not now, man. And and Anton LaVey Daniels doesn't understand that. Okay? He has very little understanding concerning the scriptures. Lamentations, the fourth chapter. Lamentations, the fourth chapter and the uh, 22nd verse. It says, the punishment of thine iniquity. That's what we're under right now. And those of us that are in this knowledge, this truth, we understand that. We understand we're in punishment time. You know, like when your parents put you in punishment time, it's not a good time. But it's necessary. If, if your parents really love you, if you do something wrong, if they really love you, they're going to punish you. They're going to put you in punishment time. Right? Well, guess what? The Heavenly Father really loves us. His name is Yahweh. His son's name is Yahweh Shai, so they got us in punishment time. We got to serve our captivity. We got to serve out our punishment because we, we did the crime. We got to do the time. Okay, we sinned against the Heavenly Father. Like Micah said, I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him. Okay, so we're in punishment time. So it's not the time to live lavishly. And those of you, Jakes, that, that do live lavishly, well, it is written, warn to you that are rich. Like Anton LaVey, I mean Anton Daniels, <laughs> the silly little Negro. The scripture says, warn to you that are rich, for you have received your consolation. Okay, warn to you that are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe means destruction. I don't want my riches right now. I want them in the kingdom where, where it counts, where I'll be able to enjoy them. I don't know goddamn riches now. How can I enjoy it in the cesspool? doesn't make any sense. This world is enough is this world is nothing but a cesspool. So I don't want no riches now. I want my riches in the kingdom where, where I'll be able to fully enjoy them. Okay? So Lamentations 4 and 22. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. So see, we're in punishment time. That's why we're under the curses. The curses are an example of the Lord's punishment for us Israelites, for our wickedness. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. So our punishment is almost up. Our bid is almost up that, that we've been serving. Okay? He will no more carry thee away into captivity. There you go. Slavery. That was part of our punishment that our forefathers endured. And guess what? We are our forefathers coming back in something called reincarnation. Anton LaVey, I mean, Anton Daniels doesn't know that. He doesn't understand that. He has very little understanding because he's a silly little Negro. As proud as shit. I don't know what the hell he got to be proud about. He's hopelessly ignorant <laughs> to these scriptures. He's hopelessly ignorant to the knowledge that counts. Oh yeah, I'm going to let him have it with both barrels. You kidding me? I ain't going to bite my tongue for that silly little Negro. Who the hell is he? He's a nobody. Okay? He's a nobody that thinks he's somebody. He thinks he's a big shot. You're going to find out that he ain't a big shot. Okay? And according to the words of Billy Joel, you had to be a big shot, didn't you? You had to open up your mouth. <laughs> Y'all gotta check that song out, man. That's what that's what Billy Joel was on fire. Okay? You had to open up your mouth, Anton Daniels. Now you're gonna get it. Okay, we're gonna light you up with these scriptures, man. Okay? Lamentations, the fourth chapter, the 22nd verse. The punishment of thine iniquities accomplished, O daughter of Zion. So we're in punishment time. And those of us that know this knowledge, we understand that. Okay? He will no more carry thee away into captivity. Right. No more captivity for us. After Esau goes down, that's the end of our captivity. We're going right into the kingdom, baby. And we're going in style. Okay? Yahweh is coming to get us. He's going to take us back to Israel. And we're going to live in style forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>
<laughs> right? <laughs> no more captivity. No more slavery. No more punishment. Okay? He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. Uh-oh, so it's the Edomites time. Edomites going to be in punishment time. And not just the Edomites, all the other nations too. Because the scripture that backs that up is uh, Deuteronomy the 30th chapter. Let's go to Deuteronomy the 30th chapter. All this wealth of information, Anton LaVey McDaniels, or Daniels, I'm sorry. He does, they don't, you know, <laughs> a little excited. They, he doesn't know that. He doesn't know this stuff. Okay. Uh, Deuteronomy the 30th chapter, the 7th verse. Let's read it. You can tell I'm having a little fun with this. Deuteronomy 30 and 7. And the Lord thy power will put all these curses, all right, that was, a, that was evidence of our punishment, the curses, Deuteronomy 28 chapter, beginning at the 15th verse. And the Lord thy power will put all these curses upon thine enemies, right, which begins with the Edomites. And it gives you a list of our enemies in the book of Psalms, the 83rd chapter. The Lord thy power will put these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee which persecuted thee. So it's going to be their time. And they're going to serve their, uh, they're going to serve the curses, their punishment in our kingdom, okay? Because they're going into captivity, they're going into slavery. So that's the point. The point is the punishment of our iniquity is almost accomplished, all right? So part of that punishment is to live a life, whereas we are Israelites, we're the princes of power, but in this kingdom we got to live a life of bare necessities, now, in, the, in, in uh, our kingdom, we're going to live a life of um, opulent lifestyle. We're going to live an opulent lifestyle. Okay, we're going to have, um, matter of fact, what's a good scripture for that? Isaiah 61, is it? We're going to have all kind of riches. We, we, are promised that, we are promised that by the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. Plus, we're going to have, we're going to have immortality. That alone is, is, you can't put a price on that. Well, we can't die. Our, the bodies we're going to have, they'll never get old, they never get tired, they never get sick. It tells you that in Isaiah 40 and 31. Okay? As a matter of fact, let me get Isaiah 40 and 31 real quick. Isaiah 40 and 31. So we don't know what it means to live in the kingdom, but not right now, we're in punishment time right now. I read the scripture to you. All right, Isaiah 40 and 31. But they that wait upon the Lord, right, we're waiting upon the Lord to totally redeem us. That's what Yahweh Shai is coming to do, to totally liberate us. All right, not only from the clutches of Esau, we're in East, this Edomite's kingdom. That's why we got to go, go to him for the one of all things, because we're in punishment. So not only is Yahweh Shai going to liberate us from Esau, he's going to liberate us from these bodies that we're in, which is part of our punishment, being in these bodies. Okay, we're going to get a new body. It tells you that in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. All right, so a great liberation is coming for us, us Israelites, beginning with the elect. Isaiah 40 and 31, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. See that? Shall renew their strength. And all the brothers are going through it, man. All the brothers are suffering. <clears throat> Excuse me, all the brothers got ailments. That's part of our punishment, man. The ailments are part of our punishment. The punishment of thine iniquity. All right, remember, I read that scripture to you. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. There you go. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Now I saw, I don't know if that was for real. I saw this video with this giant eagle. It looked like it was carrying a baby goat, which was going to be his lunch. Okay. Now some comments said that that was fake. The eagle is not able to carry that much weight some comments said now nah, you don't know what you're talking about eagles are, are very powerful anyway the eagle just want to look at the eagle when it stretch stretches out its wings it's it's a mighty looking bird <clears throat> it's a mighty looking bird that's why um the tribe of gad the so-called north american indians which they weren't supposed to that's why they worshiped the eagle many of them carried the names uh carried the name um, carried eagle in their name okay chief big eagle and such and such eagle because that was a bird that they uh, a magnificent bird that they worship the eagle powerful bird that bird flies the highest of um, that bird flies the highest amount all the birds that the heavenly father created okay the eagle that's why esau took the symbol of the eagle 
because it's a mighty powerful bird. So according to this scripture, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. So what is that telling you? We're, we're going to get spiritual power, man. We're going to be able to fly. Okay, we're going to be able to fly like you see the superheroes do. Superman, all right, Spider-Man. With Spider-Man, he flies by his web. But nevertheless, he flies, right? The main character, I guess, would be Superman. Which Superman is able to fly. He has superpowers. Okay, so we're going to mount up like... We're gonna, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. So that's spiritual power. They shall walk and not faint. So among the blessings we're going to get in the kingdom, that's an example. That's one example. Mount up with wings as eagles. We, we shall run and not be weary. Unlike now, brothers can't even, some brothers can't even run around the block without huffing and puffing. We're going to be like uh, cold terminators in the kingdom, man. We're going to have spiritual power. Okay? Uh, let me go to Isaiah 60. Read to you some more of these blessings. Isaiah 60. As a matter of fact, uh, let's go back here. Isaiah 60. This is a good one. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Yeah. Isaiah 60 and... Isaiah 60 and... <clears throat> Isaiah 60 and 3. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light. What's, what's an example of our light? These, not, these are laws, statutes, and commandments which we're going to be administering to the nations while they're in captivity under us. Now, the scripture for that is Isaiah, the second chapter. So that's an example of our light. And kings to the brightness of thy rising, right? Which begins with the elect of the nation of Israel. So even kings are going to see our glory. The kings of the other nations. That's what that's talking about. Lift up thine eyes round about and see. All they gather themselves together, they come to thee. Thy sons shall come from far. And thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. Then, this is in the kingdom, by the way. When the kingdom is instituted on the planet earth, which is what we're patiently waiting for. That's what Yahweh is coming to do. Then thou shalt see and flow together. And thine heart shall fear and be enlarged. Because of, listen to this. Because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. That's what's going to happen in the kingdom, man. That's what's going to happen in the kingdom for us. So we are patient. We'll wait. We're not going to sell out. That's another little, that's another thing with these, these, uh, uh, these so-called Negroes like Anton Daniels. They're sellouts, okay? They are sellouts. If you're not, it's like this, right? If you're not teaching the truth, if you're not for truth and, and justice, right? If you're not for truth and justice, the most high's way, right? Then you're a sellout, man. You're a sellout, okay? We're for truth and justice, the heavenly father's way. If you're not for the kingdom of Yahweh Shai here on the planet earth, then you're a sellout, okay? We are for the kingdom of, Yah of Yahweh Shai here on the planet earth because that's what Yahweh Shai is coming to do. He's coming to set up his kingdom on the planet earth, okay? So that's all we meditate on. Now, if you anything outside of that, you're a sellout. Okay? You're on the sellout train. I was meditating on that earlier today. There's a little thought that came in my head. All these niggas are on the sellout train. Chugga, chugga, chugga. Choo, choo. Chugga, chugga, chugga. Choo, choo. They're on the sellout train. Like that nigga Anton Daniels. He's on the sellout train. Nothing but a sellout, man. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> chugga, 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 choo, choo, on the sellout train. Anyway, Isaiah 60. So we're not going to sell out to Esau when, when bigger riches are promised to us. We'll wait, man. We have patience. We have discipline. Okay? We have discipline. We have patience. We'll wait. Okay? We'll wait for Yahweh Shai to come and liberate us, and then we're going to get everything. We're going to get it all. You hear me? We're going to get it all. And I'm reading it to you right here. The scriptures don't lie. Okay? So I don't mind being poor right now. Like the title of the video. If being poor was good enough for Yahweh Shai, and he was poor. He became poor for the ministry's sake. 
then being poor is good enough for me. There you go. That's my attitude. I'm not ashamed to be poor. Yes, I am poor. But I'm happily poor. Okay? I'm poor for my Lord. My Lord was poor. Okay? So it's good enough for my Lord. It's good enough for me. That's my message to you, Anton LaVey Daniels. Okay? And, you, and being poor teaches me character. Okay? It teaches me character. All right? It teaches me faith. Okay? So, Isaiah 60 and 5. Let's read that in the NLT. Your eyes will shine. This is in the kingdom. This is what we're going to experience, beginning with the elect of the nation of Israel. Your eyes will shine, and your heart will thrill with joy. For merchants from around the world, it shows you right there the earth is not going to blow up like the Death Star, because this is in the kingdom. So the earth is still going to be around. That's why it says, for merchants from around the world, because the only place that's going to be totally destroyed is America and Israel. But unlike America, Israel is going to be rebuilt. Okay? It says, and we're going to have our kingdom there. The headquarters of the kingdom, Jerusalem, is going to be there. Revelation 21, going into 22, tells you how glorious Jerusalem is going to be. We're going to have streets of gold. Our kingdom is going to have streets of gold. And brothers, brothers' wives have had dreams on that to confirm it, all right? And we're in the time of dreams. Joel, the second chapter, the 27th verse, going into the 28th verse. So, uh, Isaiah 60 and 5, Your eyes will shine and your heart will thrill with joy. For merchants from around the world will come to you. They're going to come to us. We're going to be the big boss, okay? We're going to be the big boss on the planet Earth, all right? They will bring you the wealth of many lands. They will bring you the wealth of many lands. That ain't happening now. So we'll wait, man. We have faith. We believe in the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. We have faith that this is going to happen. Okay? The scriptures cannot and don't lie. The multitude of camels shall come over to thee. So that shows you we're going to own the Arabs. Like right now, the so-called Arabs, they own us. <clears throat> right underneath the Edomites. The so-called Arabs are immensely wealthy. But guess what? In the kingdom, we're going to own them. How about that? Okay? The multitude of camels shall, come, shall cover thee. The dromedaries of Midian and Ephah, all they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense, and they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. Yeah, because we're going to be teaching them the law, statutes, and commandments, while they're in captivity, slavery under, the, under us. Okay? So all their wealth is going to be transferred to us. We're going to be the big boss. Okay? All the flocks of Kedah or Kedah shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Naboth shall minister unto thee. Of course, we know a ram can't minister unto you, but it's a metaphor. Meaning all their riches, the riches of the Ishmaelites, which are the so-called Arabs, they're going to now belong to us. Okay? Thus saith the Lord. The rams of Naboth shall minister unto thee. They shall come up with acceptance on mine altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. Yeah, which is the nation of Israel. Okay? Uh, let's see. J jumping down to the 10th verse, and the sons of strangers, that's the other nation, shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee, because they're going into slavery. For in my wrath I smote thee. What does that mean? Punishment time. Did you catch that, you brothers and sisters? Did you catch that verse? For in my wrath, what, what's an example of the Lord's wrath? The curses, Deuteronomy 28, because of our wickedness. He put curses on us. That was his wrath. He said, for in my wrath I smote thee. Yeah, he did smote us. He kicked our ass with those curses. Boy, did he kick our ass. It got so bad, we lost our nationality. We lost our identity. We lost everything, man, through those curses. Because we pissed the Lord something, something off terrible. All right? And he used the Edomites to do it. He used the Edomites. That's why King David said, deliver me from the wicked, which is thy sword. Another term for the wicked another term for the wicked is 
uh, the Edomites, or another term for the Edomites is the wicked. That's what I, uh, that's what I want to say. Another term for the Edomites is the wicked. So King David said, he, um, deliver me from the wicked, which is thy sword. So the, so the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, that's how powerful the Heavenly Father is. He used the Edomites to punish us. That's right. He used the Edomites to punish us. So we're in punishment time right now. That's why the Edomites are over us. All right, because we pissed the Lord something off terrible. So like he said here, for in my wrath, for in my wrath, I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. And that's an example of the Lord's favor and his mercy. He's going to give us everything. Everything that we lost, we're going to get it back and then some. Kind of reminds you of Job, which Job symbolizes us. You know, the Heavenly Father put all kind of punishments on Job, used Satan to do it. And by the way, Esau is Satan. <laughs> the Edomites are Satan. Their power comes from Satan. They are the children of Satan. So uh, Satan was used to persecute Job for a period of time. But afterward, you know what, what happened with Job. He kept his integrity, right? He kept his honor. He kept his integrity. He never lose faith in the Heavenly Father. His faith didn't waver, right? So eventually, Job received what? The blessings. He received more than he had lost. So that's us. We're going to receive more than what we had lost as a nation. Okay? The Lord is going to have double grace on us, double mercy. All right? For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Therefore, thy gates, because we're going to have, it tells you that in Revelation 21, the layout of the city of Jerusalem, you're going to have uh, three gates. As a matter of fact, let's get that. The, the layout in the, in the man, our kingdom is going to be off the chain. Our kingdom is going, going to be off the hook. All right. The palaces and mansions that we're going to live in is going to make what you see here is going to make it look like like a like an outhouse. <laughs> hey, the baddest mansion possible that's on the planet earth right now which no doubt will be owned by one of the Rothschilds the Rothschild family our mansions are going to make theirs look like an outhouse okay a fancy outhouse and you know what they do in an outhouse they take a shit when uh, when out when outhouses used to be the thing back in the days okay uh look at it uh, revelation 21 and uh oh oh here we go let me get all the meat off that bone. Revelation 21, the new Jerusalem. This is how, and that's how you know this wasn't fulfilled back in 1948. 1948 was a joke, okay? Don't let me even get on that subject. Revelation 21 and 10, and he carried me away. This is uh, the Apostle John speaking, and he saw a vision of how the kingdom is going to look like. He saw a future vision, right? And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven, from the Most High, right? Having the glory of the Heavenly Father and a light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high and had 12 gates, right? And at the, and, and at the gates, 12 angels and the names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Then it goes on to say on the east, there were three gates, on the north, three gates, south, three gates, west, three gates, right? The city of the wall, and the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. So it's giving you a layout of how the city of Jerusalem is going to look like. So here it says, strangers going to build up our walls. That's the slaves, that we're going to have. They're going to build up our walls. We're not going to do it. We're going to have our slaves do it. Okay? Let's read it in the NLT. Foreigners will come to rebuild your towns, and their kings will serve you. For though I have destroyed you in my anger, I will now have mercy on you through my grace. Exactly. So we're waiting for that. We'll, we'll patiently wait for the Lord's mercy. That's what Micah said. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against it. See, we have integrity. Okay? We're not going to sell out. We're, gonna, we're not going to be uh, a sellout like, like the majority of these, these uh, silly little Negroes like Anton Daniels. Okay? Uh, Isaiah 60 and 11. Therefore thy gates shall be opened. So now you know what it means by thy gates. I just showed you the precept in Revelation, the 21st chapter. We're literally going to have gates in, in our city. Therefore thy gates shall be opened continually. 
they shall not be shut day nor night. That that wasn't fulfilled in 1948. Okay, where where's the gates? Where's the gates of the city? Where's the twelve angels at them gates? Huh? Three gates on the north, three gates on the south, three gates on the east, three gates on the west, with angels at them. What what what? That didn't happen in 1948. So 1948 was a joke. They're not the real people. They're not the real Israelites. We are. And we're getting ready to go back to our land, Israel. Okay? When Yahweh Shai comes. All right? After Israel is destroyed by the nuclear destruction, it's going to be rebuilt. Because that land, that land has to be cleansed by fire. That land has to be cleansed by fire. Okay? And after that happens, Yahweh Shai is going to take us back to the land of Israel. And that's when we're going to start building the kingdom. And we're going to rule over all the nations. They're going to be our subjects. They're going to be our slaves. Because we're royal people. Royal people have, su have subjects. Royal people have slaves. Therefore thy gates shall be opened continually. They shall not be shut day nor night. That men, check this out, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. That, what, what does it mean, the forces of the Gentiles? Their wealth, their riches. They're going to bring their riches, their gold, their silver, their precious stones. They're going to bring it to us in the kingdom. We're going to be the big boss, like I said earlier, okay? Let's read that again. The scriptures don't lie, man. Therefore thy gates shall be opened continually. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. Brought as what? As slaves. Let's read that in the NLT. Your gates will stay open day and night. To receive the wealth of many lands. The kings of the world will be led as captives in a victory procession. <laughs> yeah, I don't even have to explain that. And and you know what that, that wait a minute, you know what that lines up with? Let's get that. Psalm 149. Psalm 149. Okay. Psalm 149. Now all this stuff, does Anton LeVay McDaniels <laughs> does he know that stuff? Oh, hell no. Hell no. But he's making fun of us Hebrew Israelites. Man, you have no idea who you're making fun of. All right? And it's only a matter of time till you how about Shimei Ashai pay you a visit, man, in, 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 in all your pompous glory. All right? Psalm 149 and 5. Let the saints be joyful in glory. That's in the kingdom. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. One of the reasons we're going to sing aloud because we're going to be in rulership. Okay? We're going to be in rulership, and we're going to have everything to our heart's desire, all right? And we're going to have the other nations as our servants, as our slaves. So we'll have a lot to sing about on our bed in the kingdom, okay? Let the high praises of the Heavenly Father be in their mouth, because we're going to continually praise the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. Barakatai Yahweh Bar Shemi Awashai. Barakatai Yahweh Bar Shemi Awashai. Barakatai Yahweh, Barakatai Yahweh Shai. Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai. We're going to be continually saying that because we're going to be speaking Hebrew in the kingdom. Let the high praises of the Heavenly Father be in their mouth and the two-edged sword in their hand. Yeah, two-edged sword in their hand. That's literal. And we're going to be masters of the sword. And we're going to use it to punish the other nations, especially the Edomites. All right, so we're going to be experts at the sword. Okay, two-edged sword in their hand. Why? To execute vengeance upon the heathen, that's the other nations, and punishments upon the people. Yeah, because they're going to be under the curses. So it'll be a time of punishment for Esau and the other nations. All right? For at least a thousand years. And then the Edomites, they're going to be rounded up and done away with. All right? So this is a beauti beautiful future that's, that is set before us. Let's go to the next verse. To bind their kings. Now, wait a minute. Back in Isaiah, it speaks about this royal procession, right? In the NLT. Let's read that one more time to refresh your memory. Your gates will stay open day and night to receive the wealth of many lands. That's our future. The kings of the world will be led as captives in a victory procession. As captives. All right? As captives. What's another word for captive? Slaves. Slave. So you're going to have this procession of slaves, the ki which were once kings of the other nations. They're now going to be in a procession of slaves being led to serve us. And that's the same thing Isaiah, I'm sorry, that's the same thing Psalm says. Psalm 1, 
49 and 7, to execute vengeance upon the heathen, punishments upon the people, to bind their kings with chains. The same thing Isaiah says, and their nobles with fetters of iron. By the way, that's a future prophecy. To execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints. Who are the saints? The Israelites. Psalm 148 goes into that. This honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. There you go, man. There you go. All right. So how can we lose? How can we lose? All right. Then it goes on to say, our gates shall be continually open. Or open continually, they shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces or the riches of the Gentiles, that's the other nations, and that and that their kings may be brought. I read to you Psalms, okay, for the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee, serve us Israelites, shall perish. Check that out. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. Okay, so we we gotta uh, hold on. We got a great future coming to us. So now before I end this video, again, the title is, If Being Poor Was Good Enough for Yahweh Shai, Then Being Poor Is Good Enough for Me. Now I showed you the scripture in 2 Corinthians 8 and 9. Okay, 2 Corinthians 8 and 9. By the way, Yahweh Shai didn't live in a palace. He lived in a humble ab abode. Okay, uh, 8 and 9. Second Corinthians nine um, eight nine for you know that you know that the grace you know the grace of our Lord Yahweh that though he was rich yet for your sakes he became poor there you go that ye through his poverty might be rich right and when it says might be rich meaning rich spiritually through Yahweh poverty all right so what did Yahweh say it is good enough that the servant be as his what let's read it be as his master let's get that be as his master okay it is right here uh luke 6 and 40 the disciple is not above his master there you go yahweh is the master we're the disciple but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. See? So wait a minute. Our master was poor in this kingdom. So we're going to be poor just like our master. Okay? He, he's going to liberate us. All right? Uh, so let's go from there to... Um, let's go from there to... Okay, where I want to go. Um, bear with me for a minute. I'm trying to think of a, you know what, that scripture dealing with, I can bring out 1 Timothy 6 and 9, something that the Apostle Paul told Timothy. Okay, 1 Timothy six and nine let's start at the fifth verse first timothy six and five perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth you got a lot of israelites that think that that increasing abundantly in carnal riches of this kingdom proves that the lord is with you no it doesn't actually it's a curse give me neither poverty nor riches as it is written Feed me, feed me with food convenient for me, as it is written. 1 Timothy 6 and 5, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness or righteousness, gain as in carnal gain. From such withdraw thyself, see that? But righteousness, godliness, with contentment is great gain. Contentment as in having the daily necessities, the bare necessities, Okay? For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. That applies to you, Anton Daniels. Okay, you didn't bring anything into this world. You came into this world naked. Guess how you're leaving? Naked. Okay? You can't take them so-called riches with you. And having food and remnant, there it is, daily bread, 
let us therewith be content. Let's read that in the NLT in case you didn't understand that. So if we have enough food and clothing, let us be content. Because that's all we're really going to get in this kingdom. But they that will be rich, right, fall into temptation. And that's the statement that Anton made. He said, why? Because I'm rich? I'm not going to enter into the kingdom of heaven because I'm rich? Well, as it is written, it's hardly do a rich man enter into the kingdom of heaven. The prerequisite for being in this knowledge of truth is to be poor. Isaiah 66 and 2, what, is, what does that say? Let's go to Isaiah 66 and 2. And our Lord was rich, he became poor. So we ain't got no excuse. All right, Isaiah 66 and 2, for all those things have mine hand made, is the Lord speaking through the prophet Isaiah. And all these things have been, saith the Lord, but to this man will I look, even to him that is poor, even to him that is poor, and of a contrite spirit, that's a humble spirit, and trembleth at my word. That's us, man. We tremble at the words of Yahweh Shem Yahshai. Okay? We serve the Lord with fear and trembling. All right? And we, we try to exhibit a contrite spirit, as in humble. All right? And we're definitely poor. Okay, we live day, day, day to day. We live day to day. Or, or day by day, okay? We're on, we on some daily bread vibe. Anyway, back to 1 Timothy 6 and 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts. So we don't want to be rich in this society. We don't want to be rich in this kingdom. This kingdom is tainted, man. This world is tainted. Let's go to Micah 2 and 10. All right. We, as it is written, we have no kingdom in this place. Okay. We have uh, our, our hopes and aspirations is not in this place because we know it's going to be destroyed. As it is written, the fashion of this world shall pass away. That is clearly written. Micah 2 and 10. Let's read that. Micah 2 and 10. Let me see what the, yeah, Micah 2 and 10. Go right to the point. Arise and depart, for this is not your rest. This is not our world. All right? Maybe your rest, Anton Daniels. That's why you're so proud of it. And what did you do to get those riches, huh? You wouldn't want to talk about that, would you? What did you do to get those riches? Huh? Arise and depart, for this is not your rest. This is not our rest. Because it is polluted. Damn it, this place is polluted. You got GMO foods, you got uh, chemtrails in the skies, all right, chemtrails all over the land, uh, pouring down upon us barium oxide, which is detrimental, detrimental to the human body. Barium oxide is really shaved aluminum that we're breathing in, you, and you wonder why uh, the big C is, a, is, is an at alarming rate. The big C is at an alarming rate. You wonder why. They're, they're purposely trying to kill us off, man. It's all part of the agenda of the New World Order. Going back to the Georgia Guidestones. Some, some of you might remember the Georgia Guidestones. There's a series of commandments by the wicked elite. The first commandment is uh, maintain humanity under 500 million. So presently there's about 8 billion people. So 7.5 billion gots to go. That's according to the wicked elite. And they have no problem exterminating those people. Exterminate, annihilate, exterminate. Those were the Daleks back at with uh, Doctor Who. And it's a British, uh, British sci-fi uh, uh, series, Doctor Who. You had those robot, those robots, robots, those robots called the Daleks, and that's where you got Terminator Two from because all they can. The Daleks, all they were concerned about is annihilating and destroying. That was their power, okay? Just like the Terminator, okay? So Micah 2 and 10, it says, Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. So this ain't our rest. So we're not, there's another scripture where it says we have no continuing city. Let me see if I can find it. Because it is polluted, it shall destroy you even with a sore destruction. See that? So our heart is not in this place. But Anton Daniels, his heart is in this place. He thinks he's in paradise. He thinks he's in the kingdom. He thinks he's a big shot. 
Uh, we have no continuing city. Continuing. And, um, like El Elder Pastor said, I'm, I'm, I myself is a lousy speller. I mean, I have my moments, but continue. Continuing. Let's see. Is that correct? Oh, I can't believe I spell it, spell it right. Um. It is right here. This is a quote. Hebrews 14 and Hebrews 13 and 14. For here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. There you go. There you go. What's the one to come? The kingdom. Where we're going to enjoy ourselves. I just read to you in Isaiah 60 all the riches we're going to get from the other nations in the kingdom. And we're going to be able to enjoy those riches because we're going to have nothing but time on our hands. We're not going to be bogged down by any job, any uh, none of that. Both that'll, that'll be all over. All right, we're going to be administering jobs, okay, as in slave tasks that our slaves have to do. Okay, that's what we're going to be doing. <laughs> so Hebrews thirteen and fourteen. For here we have no continuing city, right? But we seek one to come, right? That's the kingdom. We're looking forward to the kingdom, man, which is going to be here on the planet Earth. And that's going to be after the nuclear destruction. After the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through Son, Yahweh, Shai, destroys Babylon the Great, which is America. After this bitch that we're on right now, she's burning red hot. And the smoke is ascending all the way into the atmosphere. All the way into space. All right? The great smoke that's going to come from this place. Okay? <laughs> And the flip side of that, then we're going to enjoy ourselves as Hebrew Israelites. All right. So I'm going to end it there. Okay. Maybe I'll do a part two. Maybe. If being poor for if being poor was good enough for Yahweh Shai, then being poor is good enough for me. There you go. That says it all right there. So until the next video, shalom to the Lord's elect.